What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about the dreaded trust issues. Most of us have dealt with them at some point in our lives and many of us are refusing to let them go and for a pretty valid reason but I want to give you the empowerment to let go of the trust issues, open your heart and be able to receive the love that you are resisting by holding on to those trust issues. The only trust issues that I'm still holding on to was written by Drake like over a decade ago and I will never let go of that song. Oh, whoa. Now the rest of my trust issues, I still consistently work on releasing on a daily basis because people honestly continue to give me reasons to distrust people and I have to continue to transmute those reasons into something that can serve me without me being basically cold hearted and hating everyone. So if you want to go on this journey of continually releasing your trust issues along with me, I think this video would be very beneficial to you because I will be guiding you through that process. If that sounds like something that's interesting to you, then just keep on watching. So the first thing we need to acknowledge when looking at our trust issues is why they came about in the first place. And in most situations, it boils down to three things, disappointment, deception, and betrayal. If someone disappointed you, that simply means that they did not meet the expectation that they set for you. They may have told you they were gonna do something or fulfill a certain level or standard that you had set or that they had set or you had agreed upon and they never followed through. And so that's kind of left you in a place of, I don't wanna get my hopes up. So holding on to your distrust protects you from getting your hopes up and then having your hopes not met and then feeling the disappointment again. You can't be disappointed if you didn't expect anything. Now deception. Deception is when someone lies to you or deceives you, tricks you. They told you one thing but it was really another thing. This is one of my biggest pet peeves and something that I absolutely hate and this is a specific area where I had a really really hard time releasing my trust issues. I had this mindset that all men lie and if a man is saying something nice to you He's lying, <laughs> which sometimes is true, but I'll get into the details of that anyway. Really, I just want to focus on the root of the trust issues, right? When someone lies to you and deceives you, tricks you, now everything that someone says to you, you're suspicious about it. You don't want to believe the words that they're saying because you just have an expectation that it's going to turn out to be a different way, especially if it's something that you want to hear. Because, you know, a lot of people do just tell you what you want to hear so it leads us to believe that a lot of those things we want to hear are never true they're just lies manipulation and betrayal that really ties into lying and disappointment i feel like betrayal is the ultimate like trust issue trigger and something that i've definitely dealt with myself and it's been really painful but betrayal is ultimately someone pretending to be something that they're not usually someone pretending to love you when they really hate you opposing you or trying to affect you in the opposite way that they're trying to convey to you that they want to affect you. And once someone betrays you and you realize it, you're like, wow, they really had me fooled. Like, you really hid the shit out of that. Like, I would have had no clue because I, you were talking to me like you really loved me. You were saying things that actually made me feel good. You were doing things that a good person would actually do. And so it it hurts to think that the person that I thought so highly of is the same person that's doing these things. So naturally, when you're betrayed, you're assuming hidden motives in anybody. You meet a new person and automatically you're assuming, I gotta make sure this person is not gonna backstab me, or I don't wanna let this person get too close because the reason that they're here is probably not the reason they're telling me they're here or the reason that they want to be with me or spend time with me or communicate with me is not actually the reason. They're really just trying to stab me in the back or use me or manipulate me or abuse me or whatever. Betrayal is one of the hardest to deal with because it only comes from someone that you love, someone that you care for, and someone that you trust on a deeper level. If you're betrayed by like, I don't know, a random neighbor, coworker that you barely talked to, it's just like, it's just snaky, but it's not necessarily like devastating. But I think betrayal is devastating because it always comes from someone that you thought you could trust and you thought you truly loved or who you thought truly loved you. You probably did love the person. And so now it's just, you're frazzled. Well, that was kind of a bummer talking about those horrible things. Let's go ahead and get into how to resolve those issues. 
for starters, do what I was just doing in my little examples of my own experience. Retrace your steps. Because you might be going into situations knowing you have trust issues, but being like, I don't really know why. I don't really know what happened that makes me like not want to trust anybody. So take a moment to say, who really did it? Who disappointed me? Who deceived me or lied to me? Who betrayed me? What did they do? How did it make me feel? And really take the moment to sit in that and actually analyze the whole situation, all of the details, even from when you met them, if that might have anything to do with the way that things turned out. The whole chronology of who this person was to you in your lens versus who you thought they were in real time. So now that you know that this person broke your trust, how can you look at the situation more plainly and more clearly as you reflect on it? And then the next thing you wanna do, ooh, it might seem too soon, it might take a long time, it might be really, really hard, but if you want to resolve your trust issues, it's very critical that you forgive them, that you forgive yourself for being naive or for whatever you feel like might've been fault on your end which by the way, naivety and just not knowing, that's not a fault, that's just something that you need to forgive yourself for because a lot of us feel embarrassed or shameful for not knowing better. But if you knew better, you'd do better. So now you know and you can forgive yourself for being naive or for whatever role you played in the situation. And ultimately you wanna forgive that person as well, even if it just takes little things, I forgive them for this one specific thing they said to me and I forgive them for making me feel this way even though they didn't know they made me feel this way. Forgiving them for every single little thing and for the big picture as you can feel able to do so. Try to empathize with this person and understand from their perspective what might have led them to make some of these decisions. Be aware that a lot of the things that cause other people trust issues are rooted from that person already having their own trust issues. So you can usually relate to them better once you've developed trust issues and then can forgive them better. And forgiveness is a really tough topic and a lot of people think that no one deserves forgiveness when they hurt you and you didn't do anything wrong and I get why you would feel that way, but forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you to be able to receive love and not hold on to trust issues that are preventing you from being vulnerable with the right people. So go ahead and try to forgive them and accept the past, accept what happened, accept how it made you feel. Don't try to make it seem like a good thing. Accepting it doesn't mean it's okay. It doesn't mean it was appropriate. It just means that it happened. You know it happened. You accept that it happened and you can let it go. I'm really sorry if you can hear a lot of background noise too. It's a rainy day and there I live in a high traffic area so there's bound to be noises. By the way, I have a video on how to heal from a heartbreak. It's one of my first videos. If you go to that, I go into a lot more detail about forgiveness. And the last step when it comes to resolving your trust issues is to take away the lessons. What wisdom have you gained from reflecting on the situation and what wisdom have you gained from forgiving this person? The critical point, what red flags do you notice as you look back on what happened that would have made it clear to you that this person was not to be trusted or that this person was going to betray your trust? Or break your trust or whatever the case what signs did you have that you overlooked at the time that now that you're aware and you're able to look back you can see very clearly this was a sign that the person was betraying me lying to me or was going to deceive me or disappoint me you're not going to be able to walk away with the awareness of red flags unless you've forgiven those people because if you just try to skip the forgiveness piece and be like oh these are all red flags you're going to be searching for red flags in people instead of allowing them to blare off as they come. Because a real red flag is waved right in front of you. It's red. It's bright. You know, some of us are going to be looking and we're going to be like looking at something that's orange and being like, that's pretty much red. <laughs> we're going to be looking at something that's blue and being like, it's a primary color, basically red. We're going to be looking at everything and calling it a red flag because we haven't forgiven. But when we forgive people, we have a clear understanding and the wisdom gained from it that we can actually call it as it is and not claim for certain things to be red flags when they're actually not. And this is actually gonna segue us into the last portion of this video. How do you trust again? And it all starts with trusting yourself first. As I said, if you knew better, you'd do better. And after going through that process of forgiveness and gaining the wisdom, you know better. 
You don't have to fight to do better. You don't have to overanalyze to do better. It's in you. It's in you. You will do better. Your newfound awareness is your protection. Not putting walls up, not creating barriers, not being cold hearted, but truly receiving and living off of the wisdom that you've gained is what's going to protect you. And it also comes with the maturity of being patient. You want to take your time. Take your sweet little time because sometimes someone doesn't give you red flags within a week and then suddenly you think they're your husband. <laughs> That's happened to me before. <laughs> Take your time. Sometimes too soon is the risk that you're taking. Yeah, you might not see the red flags early on, but if you give it some time, depending on what you're trying to trust this person for, maybe you just want to tell them about you know your dreams or your goals and you don't want it to be a person that's gonna be jealous or envious of you. You wanna take the time to tell, does this person, when we get closer, do they start to talk a lot about their friends and tell me other people's business? Does this person speak negatively about people they love? You're going to wanna to take the time to get to know this person before you open yourself to them in a way that would make you vulnerable. In one critical point, I'm gonna put you on game because this never fails. If someone tries to pressure you, into trusting them don't do not and what does it look like to be pressured into trusting someone they might pry questions and they'll always be like you don't have to tell me i'm just you know i like to ask a lot of questions but you know it's up to you they might be like this is something that happened to me before <laughs> i think it's funny looking back but for example there's a guy who's like what type of guys do you like and you tell them something and they're like oh yeah 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 that's i'm just like that what else? And you add something else and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's me. That is a guy trying to convince you that he is the person you're looking for. To let down your guard and to just, by their words, convince you that they're the answer to your prayers, basically. And maybe they're not lying. Maybe they're actually telling the truth and they're just really excited. But either way, don't take their words just, you know, if you've told someone what you're looking for and they're just telling you that they are that, don't take that word as, you know, fact, because you're kind of giving them like the cheat code, basically. If it's really them, then they would be able to sustain it for a long time and prove to you through their actions over months that this is actually who they are. And most importantly, I mean, yeah, this is most importantly in the sense that even before you develop trust issues, this should apply. Even before someone hurts you, disappoints you, betrays you, deceives you, this should apply in every situation. A clean slate. Every person you meet should have a fresh opportunity to prove their trustworthiness. There should be no preconceived notion that this person is going to hurt you in any of the ways we talked about today. You shouldn't be creating fake scenarios in your head about, oh, what if when they said this, they actually meant that. If it didn't blare off in your head based on your prior experience, either you don't know enough to be able to identify this new form of betrayal, and this is a learning opportunity, or it's simply not the same thing. It's just not the same thing. So you have to go through the experience of learning about people, human nature. We're probably gonna get hurt again. We're probably gonna get lied to, betrayed, and deceived again at some point in our lives. But the more tools we have in our toolbox, the better we can deal with those things. And we don't want to pretend we have tools and like create fake tools because then now we're deceiving people. And you also don't want to be using a tool for something that's not broken. You get what I'm saying? Just let things be, observe them, use your knowledge, understanding, wisdom to apply it to the current situation. And if you don't know, just let it play out. That's the most you can do is stop trying to micromanage the situation and be controlling and act out of fear, which wouldn't really happen if you've actually forgiven someone, by the way. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. I hope this video was beneficial to you. If you liked it, then like it and I'll see you next time. Bye.